The Moscow Constantinople Schism, also known as the Orthodox Church Schism of 2018, is a schism which began on the 15th of October 2018 when the Russian Orthodox Church severed full communion with the Ecumenical Patriarchate of Constantinople. This was done in response to a decision of the Synod of the Ecumenical Patriarchate on the 11th of October 2018 to move towards granting independence autocephaly to the Ukrainian Orthodox Church to re-establish the Stavropijan of the Ecumenical Patriarch in Kiev, to revoke the legal binding of the Letter of 1686 establishing Russian Orthodox Church jurisdiction over the Ukrainian Church, and to lift the excommunications which affected two Orthodox Churches in Ukraine the UAOC and the UOCKP which were competing with the Ukrainian Orthodox Church Moscow Patriarchate and were, and still are, considered schismatics by the Patriarchate of Moscow. This schism shares similarities to the Moscow-Constantinople Schism of 1996, 22 years prior, which related to the canonical jurisdiction in Estonia. In a statement, the Russian Orthodox Church barred all members of the Moscow Patriarchate from taking part in communion, baptism, and marriage at any church controlled by the Ecumenical Patriarchate. Prior to that, in their synod on 14 September 2018, the Moscow Patriarchate broke off participation in any episcopal assemblies such as the Assembly of Canonical Orthodox Bishops of the United States of America, theological discussions, multilateral commissions, and any other structures that are chaired or co-chaired by representatives of the Ecumenical Patriarchate. The Russian Orthodox Church is the largest of the independent autocephalous churches that together make up the Eastern Orthodox Church. The Ecumenical Patriarchate holds a special place of honor within Orthodoxy because of its historical location at the capital of the former Eastern Roman Byzantine Empire and its role as the mother church of most modern Orthodox churches. It serves as the seat for the Ecumenical Patriarch currently Bartholomew I, who enjoys the status of primus inter pares first among, equals among the world. Eastern Orthodox prelates and is widely regarded as the representative and spiritual leader of the world. S. 300 million Orthodox Christians. Besides its religious aspect, both sides also see the dispute as part of a wider East West conflict involving Russia's 2014 annexation of the Crimea and its military intervention in Ukraine, as well as Ukraine's desire to join the European Union and NATO. Background Topic. Historical review Topic. After the baptism of Rus, its lands were under the control of the Metropolitan of Kiev. Among the 24 Metropolitans who held the throne before the Mongol invasion, only two were of local origin and the rest were Greek. Usually, they were appointed by Constantinople and were not chosen by the bishops of their dioceses, as it should be done according to the canon. After the Mongol invasion, the southern part of Rus' was heavily devastated and the disintegration of Kievan Rus' accelerated. Metropolitan Kirill III, who occupied the throne for thirty years, spent almost all of his time in the lands of Vladimir Suzdal Rus' and visited Kiev only twice, although earlier he had come from Galicia and had been nominated for the post of Metropolitan by the Prince Daniel of Galicia. After the new Mongol raid in 1299, Metropolitan Maxim finally moved to Vladimir in the north, and did not even leave a bishop behind. In 1303 a new cathedral was created for southwest Rus in Galicia and the new Metropolitan was consecrated by Constantinople, but its existence ended in 1355 after the galicia volhynia Wars. In 1325, Metropolitan Peter moved to Moscow, thus greatly contributing to the rise of the Grand Duchy of Moscow, which gradually conquered other Russian principalities in the northeast of the former Kievan Rus. Single quote dot. Another part of Kievan Rus. Gradually came under the rule of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania and the Kingdom of Poland, which entered into rivalry with Moscow. In particular, the Grand Dukes of Lithuania sought from Constantinople a separate metropolitan for the Orthodox who lived in their lands. Although the metropolitan in Moscow continued to retain the title of Metropolitan of Kiev and all Rus, he could not rule the Orthodox outside the borders of the Grand Duchy of Moscow. Constantinople twice agreed to create a separate metropolitan for Lithuania, but these decisions were not permanent, Constantinople being inclined to maintain a single church government on the lands of the former Kievan Rus. 
In 1439, Constantinople entered into union with the Roman Catholic Church. In Moscow, this decision was rejected outright, and Metropolitan Isidore, consecrated by Constantinople, was accused in heresy, imprisoned, and later expelled. In 1448, the Council of Northeastern Russian Clergy in Moscow, at the behest of Prince Vasily II of Moscow, elected Jonah the Metropolitan of Kiev and all Rus without the consent of the Patriarch of Constantinople. In 1469 Patriarch Dionysus I stated that Constantinople would not recognize any metropolitan ordained without its blessing. Meanwhile, the metropolis of Kiev de facto in Novogradok stayed under the jurisdiction of the Ecumenical Patriarch of Constantinople, and in 1458, Bishop Gregory became the Uniate Metropolitan in Kiev with the title of the Metropolitan of Kiev, Gallic and all Rus. Moscow's de facto independence from Constantinople remained unrecognized until 1589 when Patriarch of Constantinople Jeremiah II approved the creation of a new, Fifth Orthodox Patriarchate in Moscow. This decision was finally confirmed by the four older patriarchs in 1593. The Patriarch of Moscow became the head of all Russia and northern countries, and Chernihiv now in Ukraine was one of his dioceses. However, he had no power among the Orthodox bishops of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, who remained under the rule of Constantinople. At the same time, the Orthodox hierarchs of those lands were inclined to the union with Rome, despite the resistance of their parishes, who formed the Orthodox Brotherhoods or fraternities, to keep their identity. On the way from Moscow, Jeremiah II visited the lands of present-day Ukraine and committed an unprecedented act, granting Staropehia direct subordination to Patriarch to many Orthodox brotherhoods. This provoked the anger of the local bishops and soon the Union of Brest was proclaimed, which was supported by the majority of the Orthodox bishops of the Commonwealth, including Metropolitan Mikhail Rogoza. Officially, the Orthodox but not the Uniate Metropolis of Kiev in the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth was eliminated and re-established only in 1620, in subsequent coexistence with Uniate Metropolis. That led to sharp conflict and numerous revolts culminating in the Komelnitsky Uprising. In 1654, Russia entered the war with the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, it quickly occupied, for a while, the lands of present Belarus, and gained some power over the Hetmanate pursuant to the Pereyaslav Agreement 1654. The official title of Patriarch Nikon of Moscow was, Patriarch of Moscow and All Great, Lesser, and White Russia. However, the Metropolitan of Kiev Sylvester Kosov had managed to defend his independence from the Moscow Patriarchate. The Moscow government, which needed the support of the Orthodox clergy, postponed the resolution of this issue. In 1686, the Ecumenical Patriarch approved a new Orthodox Metropolitan of Kiev who would be ordained by the Moscow Patriarchate and thus transferred, albeit with certain qualifications, a part of the Kiev ecclesiastical province to the jurisdiction of Patriarchate of Moscow the Russian Orthodox Church. Topic. Deterioration of Moscow-Constantinople relations Topic. The Ecumenical Patriarch of Constantinople claims to be the foremost leader and international representative of the Eastern Orthodox Church. The Church is geographically divided into several largely independent local churches, each with its own leader Patriarch, Archbishop or Metropolitan. Topic. Three Orthodox Churches in Ukraine Topic. Since the end of the 20th century, three Orthodox jurisdictions have existed in Ukraine. The Ukrainian Orthodox Church Moscow Patriarchate UOCMP, which is part of the Russian Orthodox Church and thus under the Moscow Patriarchate. This church was, until the 11th of October 2018, the only Orthodox church in Ukraine recognized by other Orthodox churches. The Ukrainian Autocephalous Orthodox Church (UAOC), led by Metropolitan Makary, which was independent, having been founded in 1921 following the establishment of the short-lived Ukrainian People's Republic and having survived the Soviet Union both outside and inside the country. The Ukrainian Orthodox Church Kiev Patriarchate (UOCKP), led by the self-proclaimed Patriarch Philarit of Kiev", an independent church which was founded in 1992. 
In January 1992, after Ukraine gained its independence from the Soviet Union following its dissolution, Metropolitan of Kiev Filarid of the UOCMP convened an assembly at the Kiev Petrsk Lavra that adopted a request for autocephaly to the Moscow Patriarch. The Patriarch of Moscow did not comply, and Filarit was suspended on 27 May by the UOCMP, and defrocked on of July 1992 by the Russian Orthodox Church. The UAOC and the UOCKP were not recognized by other Orthodox churches and were considered schismatic. Filarit was anathematized by the ROC in 1997. ROC officials stated that the anathematization of Filarit was recognized by all the local Orthodox churches including the Church of Constantinople." On the 11th of October 2018, the excommunications of the UAOC and the UOCKP were lifted and both are now recognized by the Church of Constantinople. As of 2018, all three churches, the UAOC, the UOCKP, and the UOCMP, are still active in the country. The UOCMP has 12,064 active parishes, the UOCKP, 4807 and UAOC 1048 Topic Precedent the 1996 3 months Moscow Constantinople schism over Estonia Topic the Moscow-Constantinople Schism of 1996 began on 23 February 1996, when the Russian Orthodox Church severed full communion with the Ecumenical Patriarchate of Constantinople, and ended on 16 May 1996 when the Russian Orthodox Church and the Ecumenical Patriarchate reached an agreement establishing parallel jurisdictions. The excommunication was in response to the Ecumenical Patriarchate decision to re-establish an Orthodox Church in Estonia under the Ecumenical Patriarchate's canonical jurisdiction as an autonomous church on 20 February 1996. The 1996 schism has similarities with the schism of October 2018. Both schisms were caused by a dispute between the Russian Orthodox Church and the Ecumenical Patriarchate over the canonical jurisdiction over a territory in Eastern Europe upon which the Russian Orthodox Church claimed to have the exclusive canonical jurisdiction, territory which after the collapse of the Soviet Union had become an independent state Ukraine, Estonia. The break of communion in 1996 was made by Moscow unilaterally, as in 2018. Tendency toward isolation of the Russian Orthodox Church Elpidophoros, Metropolitan of Bursa under the jurisdiction of the Ecumenical Patriarchate, claimed that Russian Orthodox Church has a certain tendency to isolate itself from the other Orthodox Churches. The Metropolitan of Bursa notes in 2014, in an article published on the Ecumenical Patriarch official website, that examples of this isolationist behavior include the absence of the Patriarchate of Moscow from the Conference of European Churches, as well as the now established practice of the representatives of this church to celebrate the Divine Liturgy separately from the other representatives of Orthodox Churches by enclosing themselves within the local embassies of the Russian Federation whenever there is an opportunity for a Panorthodox liturgy in various contexts, always according to the Metropolitan of Bursa, others examples of the ROC's isolationism are the ROC's desire to undermine the text of Ravenna on which all the Orthodox churches agreed with the exception, of course, of the Church of Russia and the ROC's attempt to challenge in the most open and formal manner namely, by synodal decree the primacy of the ecumenical patriarchate within the Orthodox world. Topic. Absence of Moscow at the 2016 Pan-Orthodox Council Topic. Another claimed example of the tendency from the ROC to isolate itself is its absence at the 2016 Pan-Orthodox Council in Crete. In June 2016, the council was held in Crete. However, a few days before it began, the Russian Orthodox Church refused to participate. Previously the Orthodox Churches of Georgia, Bulgaria, and Antioch had also refused to participate. One of the issues cited was the method of proclaiming the autonomy of the Orthodox Churches. 
On 16 June, Ukraine's parliament, the Verkhovna Rada, asked Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew I of Constantinople for autocephaly for the Orthodox Church of Ukraine and thus independence from the Russian Orthodox Church. On the 11th of June, before the adoption of the resolution by the Rada, the Moscow Patriarchate sharply criticized the appeal of the deputies. However, the Council in Crete did not consider and did not officially comment on the Ukrainian question. Topic. Ecumenical Patriarch and the Ecclesiastical Situation in Ukraine Topic. On 13 April 2014, the Ecumenical Patriarch talked about the ecclesiastical problems in Ukraine during his Palm Sunday sermon and said, T he Ecumenical Patriarchate recognizes the difficult challenges facing the blessed Ukrainian people today. On 20 February 2015, the primate of the Canadian Ukrainian Orthodox Church, Metropolitan Yuri Kalishchuk, during a round table in Ukrainform Agency, declared that T he Patriarchy of Constantinople is watching the situation in Ukraine and considers the ideal solution to get the unified Orthodoxy and will work on uniting Orthodoxy in Ukraine. He added that the Constantinople Patriarchate is waiting for the request and guidance from the Ukrainian Orthodox jurisdictions here, but first of all it is waiting for ASTEP from the President of Ukraine." On 6 June 2015, the UAOC requested to the Ecumenical Patriarchate to receive the Ukrainian Autocephalous Orthodox Church to the Ecumenical Patriarchate as a metropolis with sick, should be a metropolis with the rights of self-governance. On 24 June 2015, the Holy Synod of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church Moscow Patriarchate, held on 24 June in Kiev, Kiev issued a statement about the presence of two bishops of the Constantinople Patriarchate in Ukraine Bishop Daniel of Pamphilon and Bishop Alarion and their meeting with Ukrainian clergy. Bishops of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church Moscow Patriarchate expressed concern about Bishop Daniel of Pamphilon and Bishop Alarion's activities in the canonical territory of the UOC MP without consent of the hierarchs of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church Moscow Patriarchate. On the 27th of June 2015, the UOC KP A S K ed the Ecumenical Patriarch to recognize their autocephalous status. On 2 February 2016, the Patriarch of Moscow officially declared that, "...it is important that there is already a common understanding of the need for consensus among all the churches, excluding any unilateral actions in granting autocephaly." The same day he warned that, "...the unilateral recognition of the schism in Ukraine will unavoidably have catastrophic consequences for the unity of the Orthodox Church." On this occasion, the Ecumenical Patriarch declared, "...we all recognize that Metropolitan Onifry is the only canonical head of orthodoxy in Ukraine." 2016 request of autocephaly to the Ecumenical Patriarch by the Ukrainian Parliament on 16 June 2016, the Ukrainian parliament successfully voted a resolution to appeal to the Ecumenical Patriarch to grant autocephaly to the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. On the same day, the Russian Orthodox Church protested fiercely against this resolution. On 19 July 2016, the Ecumenical Patriarchate said it would create a synodal commission to examine. The Ukrainian parliament's request to grant autocephaly to Ukraine on the 15th of December 2017, Philarit in Kiev met with personal representatives of the Patriarchate of Constantinople, Bishop Daniel, UOC of USA, and Bishop Hilarion, UOC of Canada, and discussed with them issues of mutual interest. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Planned provision of autocephaly to the Orthodox Church in Ukraine. Topic. Topic. 2018, rising tensions over a possible autocephalous Ukrainian church Topic. Topic. April 2018 official request of autocephaly from Ukraine and the aftermath Topic. 
On 17 April, Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko met in Turkey with the Ecumenical Patriarch and members of his synod and made an appeal to the Ecumenical Patriarch to grant autocephaly to Ukraine. Both parties reached an agreement after a seven hours long negotiation. The UOCKP and the UAOC sent a similar appeal to the Ecumenical Patriarchate in what Poroshenko described as a rare united move of the two churches the UOCKP and the UAOC. On 18 April, the draft resolution on the support of the Poroshenko's appeal was submitted to the Ukrainian parliament, and on 19 April it was adopted. On 20 April, the official request to issue a tomos of autocephaly was delivered to Ecumenical Patriarch. On 20 April, the Synod of the Ecumenical Patriarchate voted to proceed with taking the necessary steps for granting autocephaly to the Orthodox Christians of Ukraine. On 23 June 2018, a delegation of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of the Moscow Patriarchate held talks with Patriarch Bartholomew of Constantinople and other Greek hierarchs. The negotiations ended up with neither signed documents nor a joint statement, or even a short briefing for the journalists by the people who led the two sides of the talks. Quote, the goal of these talks were, according to the UOCMP, for the purpose of obtaining reliable information from Patriarch Bartholomew himself regarding initiatives for the possible granting of a tomos for autocephaly, as well as for the purpose of communicating the position of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church on this issue. The hierarchs also informed the Patriarch about the current situation of church life in Ukraine. On 25 June, the UOCMP declared it had heard the message of his Beatitude Metropolitan Onifry and the permanent members of the Holy Synod of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church on the meeting of the delegation of the UOC with His All Holiness Patriarch Bartholomew of Constantinople and members of the Holy Synod of the Ecumenical Patriarchate that took place on June 23 in Istanbul. Therefore, the hierarchs of the UOCMP adopted a joint statement in which they expressed their vision for the further development of the mission of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church in Ukrainian society. Quote, the statement concludes that t he current canonical status is quite sufficient for the Ukrainian Orthodox Church to fruitfully carry out its mission among the people of Ukraine. On 1 July 2018, the Ecumenical Patriarch said that Constantinople was the mother church of the Orthodox Church of Ukraine and declared that Constantinople never ceded the territory of Ukraine to anyone by means of some ecclesiastical act, but only granted to the Patriarch of Moscow the right of ordination or transfer of the Metropolitan of Kiev on the condition that the Metropolitan of Kiev should be elected by a clergy laity congress and commemorate the Ecumenical Patriarch. It is written in the Tome of Autocephaly, which was granted by the Mother Church Constantinople to the Church of Poland. Original separation from our throne of the metropolis of Kiev and of the two Orthodox churches of Lithuania and Poland, which depend on it, and their annexation to the Holy Church of Moscow, in no way occurred according to the binding canonical regulations, nor was the agreement respected concerning the full ecclesial independence of the Metropolitan of Kiev, who bears the title of Exarch of the Ecumenical Throne. On 31 August 2018, Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew met with Patriarch Kirill of Moscow to discuss Ukrainian autocephaly, informing him that they are implementing already this decision to grant autocephaly. The following day, in Istanbul, a synaxis of hierarchs of the ecumenical throne began. Patriarch Bartholomew delivered the keynote address to over 100 hierarchs of the throne, stating, among other things, the origin of difficulties and reactions in Ukraine are neither a recent phenomenon nor something created by the Ecumenical Patriarchate. Already from the early 14th century, when the see of the Kievan metropolis was moved without the canonical permission of the Mother Church to Moscow, there have been tireless efforts on the part of our Kievan brothers for independence from ecclesiastical control by the Moscow Center. Indeed, the obstinacy of the Patriarchate of Moscow was instrumental in occasionally creating repeated mergers and restorations of ecclesiastical eparchies, uncanonical elections of bishops as well as schisms, which still afflict the pious Ukrainian people. T. He occasional deliberate efforts of the Church of Russia to resolve this matter failed. 
Thus, since Russia, as the one responsible for the current painful situation in Ukraine, is unable to solve the problem, the Ecumenical Patriarchate assumed the initiative of resolving the problem in accordance with the authority afforded to it by the sacred canons and the jurisdictional responsibility over the Eparchy of Kiev, receiving a request to this end by the Honorable Ukrainian Government, as well as recurring requests by Patriarch Philaray of Kiev appealing for our adjudication of his case. Ecumenical Patriarchs Legates in Ukraine and Reactions of the Russian Orthodox Church On 7 September, the Patriarch of Constantinople announced, on the official websites of the Ecumenical Patriarch Permanent Delegation to the World Council of Churches as well as on the official website of the Ecumenical Patriarchate, that he had appointed Archbishop Daniel of Pamphylon and Bishop Alarion as his exarchs and legates in Ukraine. Those appointments were, according to the official announcement on the official website of the Ecumenical Patriarchate, W. Ithan the framework of the preparations for the granting of autocephaly to the Orthodox Church in Ukraine. Daniel of Palfleon and Alarion had already been sent by the Ecumenical Patriarchate in Ukraine in 2015, which at the time led to an official protest by the UOCMP. The same day, the chairman of the Moscow Patriarchate's Department for External Church Relations, Metropolitan Hilarion, gave an interview to Russia 24 TV channel about the appointment of the two exarchs. In this interview, Hilarion issued his warning that the Russian Orthodox Church may break the communion with the Ecumenical Patriarch if autocephaly is granted. This interview was entirely published on the Moscow Patriarchate's Department for External Church Relations's official website in English the same day. Hilarion declared, On 8 September, the Synod of the Russian Orthodox Church expressed its resolute protest against and deep indignation at the report published a day prior on the appointment of the two hierarchs of the Ecumenical Patriarchate as exarchs of the Patriarchate for Kiev. The same day, on a social network, Vladimir Legoida, head of the Synodal Department for Church, Society and Media Relations of the Russian Orthodox Church, commented on the topic and stated that T. He appointment by the Patriarch of Constantinople of his episcopal representatives in Ukraine, without agreement with the Patriarch of Moscow and his beatitude the metropolitan of kiev is an unprecedentedly gross incursion into the moscow patriarchate's canonical territory these actions cannot be left unanswered the same day, the OUCMP published an official declaration on its website which states, with the blessing of His Beatitude Metropolitan Onofry of Kiev and all Ukraine, the Department for External Church Relations of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church has been authorized to declare that the appointment of the two exarchs is a gross violation of the canonical territory of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. The decision made by the Constantinopolitan Patriarchate contradicts the second canon of the Second Ecumenical Council Constantinople, namely that, without being invited, bishops must not leave their own diocese and go over to churches beyond its boundaries. <laughs> September 2018, Russian Orthodox Synod's retaliatory measures and the aftermath on 14 September 2018, in response to the appointment of those two exarchs, the Russian Orthodox Church decided to hold an extraordinary session to take retaliatory measures after the appointment by the Patriarchate of Constantinople of its exarchs to Kiev following up the decision of this church's synod to grant autocephalous status to the Orthodox Church in Ukraine. The Synod of the Russian Orthodox Church decided, a statement was released the same day explaining the situation and the sanctions taken to protest against the Ecumenical Patriarch's behavior. On the same day, Metropolitan Hilarion clarified the situation in an interview published on the official website of the Moscow Patriarchate's Department for External Church Relations. In the interview, Hilarion stated, On 23 September 2018, Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew, celebrating the Divine Liturgy in St. Phocas Orthodox Church, proclaimed that he had sent a message that Ukraine would receive autocephaly as soon as possible, since it is entitled to it. On 25 September 2018, the Russian Orthodox Church outside Russia 
suspended concelebration with the bishops of the Constantinople Patriarchate and participation in the work of the Episcopal Assemblies with their membership." On 26 September, the recently appointed exarch of Ukraine, Daniel of Pamphilon, declared on his Facebook page that, "...as for the future of the Holy Orthodox Church of Ukraine, we are living it already. The path to the autocephaly is irreversible." On 30 September 2018, in an interview to Izvestia Daily published on the official website of the Moscow Patriarchate's Department for External Church Relations, Metropolitan Hilarion commented, "...the Russian Church does not need to fear isolation. If Constantinople continues its anti-canonical actions, it will place itself outside the canonical space, outside the understanding of church order that distinguishes the Orthodox Church." On 5 October, the Metropolitan Pavel, head of the Belarusian Orthodox Church Exarchate of the Russian Orthodox Church, announced the meeting of the Holy Synod of the Russian Orthodox Church on 15 October in Minsk. He said that, "...the situation with the Orthodox Church in Ukraine will be on the agenda of the meeting." This meeting had been announced previously on the 8th of January 2018. On the 9th of October, Metropolitan Hilarion, chairman of the Department of External Church Relations of the Russian Orthodox Church, warned that if the project for Ukrainian autocephaly is carried through, it will mean a tragic and possibly irretrievable schism of the whole Orthodoxy. He added that ignoring sacred canons shakes up the whole system of the church organism. Schismatics in other local churches are well aware that if autocephaly is given to the Ukrainian schismatics, it will be possible to repeat the same scenario anywhere. That is why we state that autocephaly in Ukraine will not be the healing of the schism, but its legalization and encouragement. Topic: <laughs> October 2018 Declaration of the Patriarchate of Constantinople. Topic. On the 11th of October 2018, after a synod, Patriarch of Constantinople Bartholomew renewed an earlier decision to move towards granting autocephaly to the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. The synod also withdrew Constantinople's 332 years old qualified acceptance of the Russian Orthodox Church's canonical jurisdiction over the Ukrainian Church contained in a letter of 1686. The Synod lifted the excommunication of Patriarch Philaret of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, Kiev Patriarchate and Metropolitan Makary of the Ukrainian Autocephalous Orthodox Church and both bishops were "...canonically reinstated to their hierarchical or priestly rank, and their faithful have restored to communion with the Church." It was later preceded that Philaret was considered by the Ecumenical Patriarchate only as the former Metropolitan of Kiev, that the Ecumenical Patriarchate did not recognize neither the UAOC nor the UOCKP as legitimate and that their respective leaders were not recognized as primates of their churches. The Synod was viewed as a key step towards those two organizations merging into a single church independent from Moscow. The Russian Orthodox Church is linked to 12,000 parishes in Ukraine while the Kiev Patriarchate and UAOC control about 6,000. However, it is believed that many of the Russian controlled Ukrainian parishes may defect to the Kiev organizations. In an interview given to the BBC on 2 November 2018, Archbishop Job, Hierarch of the Church of Constantinople, explained that since the Ecumenical Patriarchate abolished the decision of the 1686 letter on of October 2018, the UOCMP canonically ceased to exist in Ukraine on of October 2018. He added that canonically there could be only one church on the territory of Ukraine and that therefore an exarchate of the Russian Orthodox Church in Ukraine was simply uncanonical, and that in Ukraine, there can be no repetition of Estonia's scenario. <laughs> Aftermath and excommunication of the Ecumenical Patriarchate by the Russian Orthodox Church Topic. On the evening of of October, the day of the declaration of the Patriarch of Constantinople, Ukraine's President, Poroshenko, enthusiastically welcomed Constantinople's move, which Poroshenko, prematurely and therefore erroneously, described as the granting of a tomos of autocephaly a formal decree of church independence to the Ukrainian Church, and presented Ukrainian Church independence as part of Ukraine. 
S wider conflict with Russia that involves Russia. S 2014 annexation of the Crimea, Russia. S military intervention in Ukraine and Ukraine. S desire to integrate with the West by joining the European Union and NATO, which is a perception broadly shared by both sides in the dispute. On the 12th of October 2018, the day after the Ecumenical Patriarch decision, according to the Kremlin website, Russian President Vladimir Putin held an operational meeting with the permanent members of the Security Council, the Security Council of Russia, that discussed issues of the domestic Russian socio-economic agenda and international issues. Ukraine's Euromaidan press described this as Putin convening an extraordinary meeting of the National Security and Defense Council, where the situation of the Russian Orthodox Church in Ukraine was discussed. And it added that, this is a revealing slip of the tongue, since to assuage Ukrainians, the UOCMP has been insisting it is independent of Moscow and in no way the Russian Church in Ukraine. Similar accounts were given by Russia. S. Sputnik News and by the Religious Information Service of Ukraine, quoting Interfax Religion, Putin's Press Secretary Dmitry Peskov, and the Kremlin website. Topic. Official break of communion with Constantinople by Moscow Topic. On 15 October 2018, the Holy Synod of the Russian Orthodox Church, meeting in Minsk, decided to cut all ties with the Constantinople Patriarchate. This decision forbade joint participation in all sacraments, including communion, baptism, and marriage, at any church worldwide controlled by Constantinople. At the time of the schism, the Russian Orthodox Church had over 150 million followers, more than half of all Eastern Orthodox Christians. The same day, after the Synod, a briefing for journalists was given by Metropolitan Hilarion, chairman of the Department of External Church Relations of the Russian Orthodox Church, in which he declared that t he decision on complete cessation of the Eucharistic communion with the Patriarchate of Constantinople was taken today. Topic. Declarations by the Russian Orthodox Church the next day, Metropolitan Hilarion, chairman of the Department of External Church Relations of the Russian Orthodox Church, explained on Russian television that the decisions of the Patriarch of Constantinople run contrary to the canonical tradition of the Orthodox Church. Moreover, an official communicate from the External Church Relations of the Russian Orthodox Church published the same day quoted Hilarion saying, we no longer have a single coordinating center in the Orthodox Church, and we should very clearly realize that the Patriarchate of Constantinople has self-destructed as such because having invaded the canonical boundaries of another local church, by legitimatizing a schism it the Ecumenical Patriarchate has lost the right to be called the coordinating center for the Orthodox Church. On 17 October, Metropolitan Hilarion was interviewed by the BBC Russian Service. This interview was published on the official website of the Department of External Church Relations of the Russian Orthodox Church the very same day. Hilarion declared that, The fact that the Patriarchate of Constantinople has recognized a schismatic structure means for us that Constantinople itself is now in schism. That I t has identified itself with a schism. Hilarion added that when members of the Russian Orthodox of Moscow Patriarchate pay visits to the monasteries on Mount Athos, they cannot participate in the sacraments for example, receive communion, and promised punishment to any priests who participate in the divine services together with the local clergy. It is known that Russia makes large donations to the monasteries on Athos the sum of $200 million was announced, and the highest Russian officials and oligarchs run charitable foundations and make pilgrimages to Athos. Hilarion hinted that, H.I. story shows that when Athos is concerned over something, the monasteries on the Holy Mountain do find ways to inform the Patriarch of Constantinople about it, and called on Russian businessmen to switch donations to Russian sacred places. On 19 October, during a meeting with Pope Francis, Hilarion announces him that, because of the actions of the Patriarchate of Constantinople the Russian Orthodox Church had to suspend its participation in the work of the Joint International Commission for Theological Dialogue between the Roman Catholic Church and the Orthodox Church. 
This is probably due to the fact that the Synod of the Russian Orthodox Church had previously, on 14 September, decided to break off the participation of the Russian Orthodox Church in the Episcopal Assemblies and in the Theological Dialogues, Multilateral Commissions and any other structures chaired or co-chaired by representatives of the Patriarchate of Constantinople. On 21 October, Metropolitan Hilarion declared in an interview that T. He Patriarch of Constantinople, who has positioned himself as the coordinator of common Orthodox activity, can no longer be such a coordinator, because said Patriarch of Constantinople had opted for schismatics and ha d fully associated himself with them. This interview was published on the official website of the Department of External Church Relations of the Russian Orthodox Church. On the 22nd of October, Hilarion published a declaration on the same official website which stipulates that according to the Russian Orthodox Church, Philaret was and remains a schismatic, despite the recognition of Philaret by the Patriarch of Constantinople. In the declaration, Hilarion also expressed his fears that, since on 20 October 2018 the UOCKP had decided to give the title of Archimandrite of the Kiev Pechersk and Poche of Lavras to Philaret, Philaret could be planning to seize the main holy sites of the canonical Ukrainian Church, i.e., the Ukrainian Orthodox Church Moscow Patriarchate. Quote dot. On 30 October, Philaret said that after the formation of the single church there would be no violence against the canonical UOC, including in resolving property issues. On 23 October, Archpriest Igor Yakumchik, the Moscow Patriarchate Department for External Church Relations Secretary for Far Abroad, told Interfax that G. Ivan that the Byzantine Empire long ago ceased to exist and that Istanbul is not even the capital of Turkey now, there are no more canonical foundations even for the symbolic primacy of the Constantinople Patriarchate in the Orthodox world and that the rock would not comply to the ecumenical patriarch's decision on the 24th of October the department of external church relations of the russian orthodox church published on its website an interview with the head of the ukrainian orthodox church moscow patriarchate metropolitan onofry this interview was previously published by the information and education department of the ukrainian orthodox church in the interview onofry said that I f the tomos on the Patriarch of Constantinople's recognition of the schismatics is granted, then it will generate new schisms, larger and deeper. These schisms will affect not only our Ukraine, they will affect the whole world Orthodox Church. On 27 October, Archpriest Nikolai Balashov, deputy head of Department for External Church Relations of the ROC, declared in an interview that Russians will never stop regarding Kiev as the mother of all Russian cities, as the font of their christening, birthplace of their Christian culture. The same day, on the Russia 24 channel, Metropolitan Hilarion gave an interview. The restranscription of this interview was published 28 October on the official website of the Department of External Church Relations of the Russian Orthodox Church. Hilarion declared, on 28 October, the Patriarch of Moscow Kirill stated in a speech which was two days later published on the official website of the Department of External Church Relations of the Russian Orthodox Church, there is no conflict whatsoever between Constantinople and Moscow. There is Moscow's defense of the inviolable canonical norms. If one of the churches supports the schismatics, if one of the churches violates canons, then she ceases to be an Orthodox Church. Therefore, the position of the Russian Orthodox Church today, which has stopped the liturgical mention of the Patriarch of Constantinople, has to do not only with the relationships between the two patriarchs, the point is the very nature of the Orthodox Church. H. On 30 October, he declared he was ready to meet the ecumenical patriarch in Turkey to prevent the development of events we are facing today. Topic. Following events in Ukraine Topic. Topic. Transfer of St. Andrew's Church occupation by the Ukrainian Parliament Topic. On 18 October 2018, the Ukrainian Parliament gave approval to give permanent use of the St. Andrew's Church in Kiev to the Patriarch of Constantinople for him to hold worships, religious ceremonies and processions in the said church, provided that St. Andrew S. Church is also used as a museum and still belongs to the Ukrainian state. 
St. Andrew's Church will also serve, according to an official, as the Ecumenical Patriarchate's embassy in Ukraine. St. Andrew's Church previous owner was the Ukrainian Autocephalous Orthodox Church which accepted the transfer. The parliament had to vote on this decision because the church is part of a national heritage site owned by the state. The goal of this vote was, according to the Kiev Post, to speed up the receipt of a Tomos ordinance, the recognition of a local Orthodox Church in Ukraine by the Global Orthodoxy. Irina Lutsenko, the representative of the Ukrainian president in Parliament, declared the goal of this action was to make a sign of solidarity with this process of Ukraine receiving a Tomos, as well as a symbolic gesture of unity with the Mother Church, Constantinople. However, on the same day the opposition bloc introduced a motion to repeal the transfer, which meant that the Ukrainian president would not be able to sign the motion to transfer the St. Andrew's Church until the motion of repeal is reviewed by the Ukrainian parliament. <laughs> Planned Unification Council a unification council to create a united Ukrainian church should take place between the UOCKP, the UAOC, and some members of the UOCMP who are willing to join an autocephalous Ukrainian church to form a single local church in Ukraine. The date of this unification council is unknown and its convocation depends on the Patriarch of Constantinople. But Philaret, head of the UOCKP, hopes that thanks to his church's efforts this council could take place before the end of the year 2018. Philaret declared that the question of which parishes would join a united Ukrainian church will be decided by vote of the congregation of each parish. It is believed that a united Ukrainian church is a compulsory step before Ukraine can be granted its tomos autocephaly from the Patriarch of Constantinople. According to Philaret, he would undoubtedly be the winner in case of an election of the leader of a united Ukrainian church. But not because he consider s himself the right candidacy. B. Ut because Moscow will do everything to destroy the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. And therefore, in order to preserve the Ukrainian Orthodox Church and burring sick the cause to the end, he ha s to work to the end." Philaret declared he is ready to take the role of head of a united Ukrainian church. On 20 October, in an interview with Espresso, TV, the head of the UAOC, Makary, declared that there are no negotiations in this direction a united Ukrainian church. And that, after the last meeting with the head of the UOCKP Philaret, at which he said that only his statute would be used, the UAOC leader began to question the success of the union. On 27 October he told ZIK TV he would not nominate his candidacy during the future council and would instead, support the one to be offered by the ecumenical patriarch. On 3 November 2018, Ukrainian President Poroshenko, in visit in Turkey, signed a cooperation agreement with the Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew. According to Poroshenko, this agreement "...creates all the conditions for the preparation process for a unification assembly and the process of providing a tomos to be brought into clear correspondence with the canons of the Orthodox Church." This agreement led to protests by hierarchs of the UOCMP and the ROC. The text of the agreement is unknown. In an interview to the BBC, Archbishop Job of the Ecumenical Patriarchate declared the United Ukrainian Church would be called the Orthodox Church in Ukraine. However, Philaret, head of the UOCKP, declared the United Ukrainian Church would be called Ukrainian Orthodox Church, with Kiev Patriarchate as the church's second name. Topic. Ukrainian Orthodox Church – Kiev Patriarchate Topic. On 20 October 2018, the UOCKP due to the changes taking place in the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, given the historical tradition and practice of the local Orthodox churches, and other essential circumstances, changed the title of its head, Philaret, to Archbishop, Metropolitan, and Patriarch and gave him the title of Archimandrite of the Kiev Pechersk and Poche of Lavras. A press conference covering the subject was held on 26 October 2018. Philaret 
S full title since the 20th of October 2018 is defined by the UOCKP as His Holiness and Beatitude name Archbishop and Metropolitan of Kiev Mother of the Rus cities and of Galicia Patriarch of all Rus Ukraine Holy Archimandrite of the Holy Assumption Kiev Pechersk and Pechav Lavras the abbreviated form of the title is His Holiness name Patriarch of Kiev and all Russia Ukraine this was done despite the fact that the decision to lift Philaret's anathema and reinstate his episcopal rank does not entail any recognition of a Kievan Patriarchate, that Philaret was at the time, and still is, considered by the Ecumenical Patriarchate only as the former Metropolitan of Kiev, and that the Ecumenical Patriarchate did not recognize the UOCKP as legitimate and that Philaret was not recognized as the primate of his churches. Metropolitan Hilarion commented that this bestowal of title was a farce. On 23 October, Philaret's 90th anniversary, 23 January 2019, is proposed to be celebrated at the state level by some Ukrainian MPs. <laughs> Ukrainian Supreme Court on 31 October, the Ukrainian Supreme Court declared on its official Facebook page that it is "...proceeding with three claims from various plaintiffs to overturn the parliamentary decree on supporting an appeal to Patriarch Bartholomew." The first lawsuit comes from the UOCMP religious community of the St. Nicholas Church of Berdyansk, Berdyansk Eparchy, Zaporozhye Region. The second lawsuit comes from St. George's Monastery of Gorodnitsa in the Jatoma Region 3. The third claim comes from the Abbot of the Tithes Dijiatini, Monastery Bishop Gedeon Karen of Makarov. Reactions International community Russia, on 12 October 2018, the Russian President, Vladimir Putin, "...held an operational meeting with the permanent members of the Security Council." The Security Council of Russia that discussed, "...a wide range of domestic and foreign policy issues, including the situation around the Russian Orthodox Church in Ukraine." According to Putin's press secretary Dmitry Peskov, Ukraine, Ukraine. S. President, Petro Poroshenko, enthusiastically welcomed Constantinople's move, and presented the Ukrainian Church's independence as part of Ukraine's wider conflict with Russia, and Ukraine's desire to integrate with the West by joining the European Union and NATO. United States, the Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, urged all sides to respect the independence of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, reiterating the United States strong support for religious freedom and the freedom of members of religious groups. Responses from other Eastern Orthodox churches Belarusian Orthodox Church and the Russian Orthodox Church outside Russia before the schism Topic. On the 11th of September 2018, the Synod of the Belarusian Orthodox Church the Exarchate of the Russian Orthodox Church in Belarus issued a statement proclaiming their unanimous support for the position of Patriarch Kirill of Moscow, protesting the actions of the Ecumenical Patriarchate. On the 5th of October, the Metropolitan Pavel of the Belarusian Orthodox Church urge d the ecumenical patriarch bartholomew of constantinople and the synod of the church of constantinople to review their decisions and do everything possible to either disavow the previous decision or withdraw it stopping this process which is taking absolutely distinct forms of church schism throughout eastern orthodoxy on the 10th of october 2018 the russian orthodox church outside russia has express ed its profound indignation at the blatant violation of the holy canons by the Orthodox Church of Constantinople. 
the decision of its hierarchy to send its exarchs into the canonical territory of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, without the agreement and permission of His Holiness Patriarch Kirill of Moscow and all Russia and his Beatitude Metropolitan Onofry of Kiev and all Ukraine, is a gross and unprecedented incursion by one local church into a distant canonical territory." After the schism Topic. On 18 October 2018, the Russian Orthodox Church outside Russia an autonomous church of the Moscow Patriarchate has expressed complete support of the position taken by the Holy Synod of the Patriarchate of Moscow, following its meeting of 15 October 2018 and announced in its statement of the same date, and severed Eucharistic communion with the Ecumenical Patriarchate. Topic. Greek Orthodox Patriarchate of Alexandria and the Polish Orthodox Church Topic. On 14 October 2018, the Polish Orthodox Church declared that c onsent of all the local churches is needed in order to grant the autocephaly to the Ukrainian Church, and a hasty decision can deepen the schism. Autocephaly is granted by the Mother Church after reaching agreement with the primates of all the local churches. On the 22nd of October 2018, the Greek Orthodox Patriarchate of Alexandria and the Polish Orthodox Church issued a joint statement in which they call upon all those on whom it depends to eliminate church misunderstandings associated with the bestowal of autocephaly to the Ukrainian Church, to please do whatever is within their might to avoid conflict over this issue in order to establish church order on Ukrainian territory. Serbian Orthodox Church and the Greek Orthodox Church of Antioch Topic. Topic. Before the Schism Topic. On 24 September, before the Schism, Patriarch Irinej of the Serbian Orthodox Church preceded its position in an interview. He warned that if a schism between Constantinople and Moscow were to happen, it would be a bigger and harder schism than all the previous ones in the history of the Church, quantitatively greater than the schism of 1054, given the present number of Orthodox churches and their widespread distribution in the world." Irinej added that, "...the Serbian Orthodox Church does not accept the existence of two different and bickering Orthodox Christianities, one Phanariotic, Constantinople, and the other of Moscow." but instead believes in one, holy, communal and apostolic Church of Christ." Irinej summed up his position saying his church is not for Moscow, but for the full respect of the centuries-old canonical order, and is not against Constantinople, but against any initiative that, even independently of good intentions, would certainly cause even more severe shocks and divisions than they already have. After the schism Topic. After the schism, Patriarch Irinej gave an interview in which he condemned the 11th of October decision of the Ecumenical Patriarchate as it "...creates the possibility, and strengthens it, for new divisions within the local Orthodox churches," and that the Ecumenical Patriarch had taken a decision which can bring catastrophic consequences to the Church to recognize the schismatic Church and grant it an autocephaly that he the Ecumenical Patriarch has no right to do." The same fear of a multiplication of schisms also seems to be present among the "...Serbian Church officials who say they fear the Constantinople Patriarchate's decree on Ukraine will be followed by recognition of the breakaway Macedonian Orthodox Church." The Serbian and Antiochian patriarchs made a common declaration to appeal to Patriarch Bartholomew of Constantinople to restore the fraternal dialogue with the Orthodox Church of Russia in order to resolve the conflict between the patriarchates of Constantinople and Moscow. Topic: <laughs> Georgian Orthodox Church. Topic: 
Although Ukrainian parliament chairman Andriy Parabi stated after an October 5 visit to Tbilisi that the Georgian Orthodox Church was in support of Kiev, Georgian Patriarch Ilya II later denied this, and church spokesman Mikhail Botkaveli said, We need more time to discuss the arguments of the Russian Orthodox Church, after which the Georgian Orthodox Church will announce its position. It is reported that there are sharp divisions within the Georgian Orthodox Church, which analysts see as the most pro-Russian institution in an anti-Russian country. A major factor in the dispute within the GOC is the role of the Abkhazian Orthodox Church which itself broke from the GOC, a dispute which the Russian Orthodox Church has offered to mediate, while some clerics see this as a reason to maintain the goodwill of the Russian Orthodox Church, while others viewed the Abkhazian Church as already under the control of Moscow, with some accusing Moscow of hypocrisy, with one theologian arguing publicly that the Moscow Patriarchate is betraying the biblical principle of do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Romanian Orthodox Church. Topic: The Romanian Orthodox Church on the 26th of October called for Constantinople to cooperate with Moscow in resolving the issue and stated that synodality at the pan Orthodox level is a permanent necessity in the life of the Church. Other Orthodox churches The Bulgarian, Macedonian and Montenegrin latter two being uncanonical Orthodox churches have stated that they cannot yet comment. The Macedonian Orthodox Church has asked to be canonically recognized by the Ecumenical Patriarch but was met with a harsh refusal. Constantinople insisted on drawing a distinction between the situation with the Ukrainian Church and the Macedonian Church. Constantinople had never given up its own jurisdiction over Ukraine in favor of Moscow, whereas it did so with the Macedonian eparchies in favor of the Serbian Church in 1922, when a Macedonian state did not exist. Topic Possibility of a pan-Orthodox synaxis on the question of Ukraine The possibility of a pan-Orthodox synaxis has been raised before and after the official break of communion. On 29 September 2018, the Reverend Alexander Volkov, the press secretary of the Patriarch of Moscow, declared the L. Ocal National TAS Orthodox churches may initiate a pan-Orthodox synaxis, consultative assembly or conference, on the problem of the Ecumenical Patriarch's decision to grant autocephaly to the Church in Ukraine." However the problem was that convening such a synaxis is, "...a prerogative of the first among the equals, that is, the Ecumenical Patriarch." Volkov noted there was Oh, there's forms of pan-Orthodox synaxis. There are the elders of the Church who can take this task upon themselves. If you look at the diptychs the table specifying the order of commemorating the primates of Orthodox Churches, TAS, the next in line after the Ecumenical Patriarch, TAS is the Greek Orthodox Patriarch of Alexandria. Or else, there is the so-called synaxis of the eldest patriarchs, of Alexandria, Jerusalem and Antioch." On 16 October 2018, Igor Dodon, the president of Moldova, announced his country, "...will be prepared to host a pan-Orthodox council that would discuss the problems the Orthodox world has encountered following the decisions taken by the Ecumenical Patriarchate of Constantinople in relation to the Ukrainian Church," which is one of the most acute issues in the whole history of orthodoxy." He also said that, "...Moldova will remain a canonical territory of the Moscow Patriarchate." Thus far, Patriarch John X of the Greek Orthodox Patriarchate of Antioch, Patriarch Irenej of the Serbian Orthodox Church, Archbishop Chrysostomos II of the Church of Cyprus, the Polish Orthodox Church Primate Metropolitan Sawa Rychuniak, the Orthodox Church in America Primate Metropolitan Tikon, and three hierarchs of the Bulgarian Orthodox Church Metropolitans Gabriel of Levesque, John of Varna and Veliki Preslav, and Daniel of Vidin have expressed their desire for a pan-Orthodox synaxis or pan -Orthodox Orthodox Council over the question of Ukraine in various statements. Topic: Canonical issues. 
Topic. The schism has its root in a dispute over who between the Patriarchate of Moscow and the Patriarchate of Constantinople has canonical jurisdiction over the See of Kiev, Kiev and, therefore, which Patriarchate has canonical jurisdiction over the territory of Ukraine. T he principal argument proposed concerning the granting of the ecclesiastical status of autocephaly to Ukraine by the Ecumenical Patriarchate is that Ukraine constitutes the canonical territory of the Patriarchate of Moscow and that, consequently, such an act on the part of the Ecumenical Patriarchate would comprise an «intervention» into a foreign ecclesiastical jurisdiction. Quote, the Patriarchate of Moscow's claim of canonical jurisdiction is based mostly on two documents, the Patriarchal and Synodal Act or Letter of Issue a 1686, and a 1686 Patriarchal Letter to the Kings of Russia. Both those documents are reproduced in the appendix section of a study published by the Ecumenical Patriarch called the Ecumenical Throne and the Ukrainian Church. The documents speak. The Church of Constantinople claims the Church of Constantinople has canonical jurisdiction over the See of Kiev and that the documents upon which the Russian Orthodox Church bases its claim of jurisdiction over said See of Kiev do not support the Rock's claim. Topic. Ecumenical Patriarchates' claims Topic. The Ecumenical Patriarchate issued a document authored by various clerics and theologians called the Ecumenical Throne and the Ukrainian Church, the documents speak. This document analyzes canonical historic documents namely the Patriarchal and Synodal Act or Letter of Issue a 1686 and the 1686 Patriarchal Letter to the Kings of Russia to see if the claim over the See of Kiev by the Patriarch of Moscow is canonical or not. The date of publication of this document is unknown, but the earliest online version can be found on 28 September 2018 on the website of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America in PDF in English as well as in Greek. The Ecumenical Throne and the Ukrainian Church was translated in Ukrainian as of the 6th of October 2018. The Ecumenical Throne and the Ukrainian Church concludes that T through the autocratic abolition of the commemoration of the Ecumenical Patriarch by each Metropolitan of Kiev, the de jure dependence of the Metropolis of Kiev and the Church of Ukraine on the Ecumenical Patriarchate was arbitrarily rendered an annexation and amalgamation of Ukraine to the Patriarchate of Moscow. All these events took place in a period when the ecumenical throne was in deep turmoil and incapable on account of the circumstances of the time to raise its voice against such capricious actions. The Church of Ukraine never ceased to constitute de jure canonical territory of the ecumenical patriarchate. The ecumenical patriarchate was always aware of this despite the fact that, on account of the circumstances of the time, it tolerated the arbitrary actions by the patriarchate of Moscow. T. He ecumenical patriarchate is entitled and obliged to assume the appropriate maternal care for the Church of Ukraine in every situation where this is deemed necessary. Konstantin Vitochnikov, 2 Ph.D. in Theology, Ph.D. in History and member of the Collège de France, who participated in Augustus 2016 to the 23rd International Congress of Byzantine Studies in Belgrade where he made a report on the subject of the transfer of the See of Kiev, and who helped the Ecumenical Patriarchate on the Ecumenical Throne and the Ukrainian Church, declared on 27 December 2016 that the transfer of the See of Kiev from the authority of the Ecumenical Patriarchate to the authority of the Russian Orthodox Orthodox Church never took place. Topic: Arguments against the Ecumenical Patriarchate's claims. Topic: In its the 15th of October 2018 official statement, the Russian Orthodox Church gave counterarguments to the Ecumenical Patriarch. S. Arguments, Metropolitan Hilarion, Chairman of the Moscow Patriarchate's Department for External Church Relations, declared in an interview that Constantinople's plan to grant autocephaly to a part of the Russian Orthodox Church that once was subordinate to Constantinople runs counter to historic truth when the Church of Constantinople say s that the entire territory of Ukraine has been on Constantinople's territory for 300 years and for that reason annul s the decision of 1686. Because 
T he Kiev Metropolia that was incorporated into the Moscow Patriarchate back in 1686 did not coincide with the present-day territory of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. It was much smaller. It did not include Donbass, Odessa and other regions." Archbishop Clement of the UOCMP considers that to revoke the letter on the transfer of the Kiev metropolis in 1686 is the same as to cancel the decisions of the ecumenical councils of the 4th or 7th centuries." On 8 November, the pro-Moscow anonymous site Union of Orthodox Journalists analyzed the same documents the Patriarchal and Synodal Act, or Letter of Issue. A 1686 and the 1686 Patriarchal Letter to the Kings of Russia and concluded that the See of Kiev had been completely transferred to the jurisdiction of the Russian Church in 1686. Topic Trivia. Topic. If the See of Kiev had been effectively transferred from the authority of the Patriarch of Constantinople to the authority of the Patriarch of Moscow, that would be the earliest date in history that such a thing happened. See also Moscow-Constantinople Schism Bulgarian Schism Eastern Orthodox Church Organization Philetism Russian irredentism Russian military intervention in Ukraine 2014 -present. Russian nationalism Schism of 1054 Ukrainian nationalism Topic. References. Topic. Topic. Notes. Topic. Topic. References. Topic. Topic. Literature. Topic. Shubin, Daniel. 2004. A History of Russian Christianity. Volume 1, From the Earliest Years Through Tsar Ivan IV. New York, Algora Publishing. ISBN 978-0-87586-289-7. Shubin, Daniel. 2005. A History of Russian Christianity. Volume 2, The Patriarchal Era Through Peter the Great, 1586-1725. New York, Algora Publishing. ISBN 978-0-87586-348-1. Hosking, Jeffrey, ed. 1991. Church, Nation and State in Russia and Ukraine. Palgrave Macmillan UK. ISBN 978-1-349-21566-9.